Welcome to our Clarity and Focus session here uh, at Consulting Unleashed. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about actually managing our leads and closing the deals. And this is an area that a lot of people uh, don't do. And, I, and, and, I, and I, the reason why they don't do it is because they're not thinking about what's actually going on in the sales process of their business. Even larger agencies don't do this as well. I've actually sat down with agencies, multi-million dollar agencies, and sat down and said, hey, let's look at what, you know, how you manage your leads. Let's look at how you walk people through into uh, closing deals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some of the key things that you can do. I'm going to share some things you can do that you can get access to that are free, that you can actually apply uh, this to your business. And at the same time, uh, if, you, if you understand what I'm about to share, and this is very, very simple, very easy to do, but if you understand what I'm about to share, uh, um, it will be an absolute game changer for how you generate uh, leads, how you manage those leads, and more importantly, how you convert those sales. Uh, so there are a couple of uh, aspects to, to this process. Um, and so I'm going to literally show you the functionality. I'm going to give you a demonstration. I'm going to, I'm going to jump into a CRM. I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to show you what you need to do to set one up really easily, uh, uh, very simply. And then I'm going to be able to answer your questions, help you with strategy, uh, help you move forward in this session. So welcome to our uh, Clarity and Focus session. Uh, essentially today is all about managing our leads and then making sure we're maximizing the ability to close those leads into a deal. So I've uh, gone into my laboratory, prepared a few slides for you today, uh, like I always do, uh, to share this. I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, but uh, with that, we're going to kick this off. Uh, if you've got questions, just type them in the chat as we go along. I will come back to those questions and answer those questions for you. If you've got a microphone and you want to hop in and ask me questions directly and I can coach you directly, then let's do that. Uh, so again, thank you for being here. Let's uh, get into managing our leads and closing the deals. So let's just share my screen. Uh, boop, boop. All right, so uh, hopefully you should be able to see my screen. Uh, if you do see my screen, just type one on your keyboard in the chat and just hit one, just so I know that you can actually see the screen that I'm sharing with you. Awesome, we've got a few people doing that, fantastic. All right, so. Um, Managing leads, closing sales. Uh, um, uh, so let's uh, let's get into this. So just to give you a perspective, uh, that's not wins for April. This is wins for yesterday. Uh, we had Tim who closed a $150,000 deal yesterday, which is amazing. Uh, Edmund took a strategy that I shared with him where he picked up $10,000 worth of media cash. We've got John here who closed a 2 k per month SEO deal. I believe John is working with you, Damien Papworth at Globatel, uh, or, or uh, providing that service with you. Uh, but that's just to show you that uh, every... Um, uh, uh, every day, uh, in the conversation that I'm having with my consulting champions uh, and with consultants around the world, that people are really closing deals in the middle of all this uh, craziness that is going on. And it's really weird that we've even seen a level of apathy in the marketplace. Uh, Damien shared yesterday that there were people that literally have just closed their doors uh, and not in the market, which means it opens the opportunity for all of us here to go and pick up clients that aren't being serviced by the market. Uh, to me, uh, there's never been a more opportune time to actually do that. So so just to demonstrate, and we've had results here on these daily calls where people are closing deals, building business. We have Mark John over here who's closed five sales uh, and building his business as well by applying a lot of the tactics that I've been sharing on a daily basis. So it's nice to be able to share some of the results from the people who are applying the stuff that we're teaching here uh, and putting those results in their bank accounts. So let's get into uh, uh, our thing. Biggest mistake agencies make is they don't manage their leads. Now, I want to just qualify this. Oftentimes in the agency world, especially those who are in our world are scraping leads, we're buying leads, we're, we're getting leads from LinkedIn, we've got all that sort of stuff. But the problem is that if we don't have a place or a structure to be able to manage those leads, then what will happen is we actually start losing sales opportunities because timing is really important. If you generate a lead through acquisition, then the quicker you get to that lead, the faster you're going to make the sale. The longer you leave the lead, like if you leave the lead for, lead for a day, <clears throat> you're going to lose the sales opportunity. So if you generate a lead, like if you're inbound and generating a lead, whether it's a referral or it's somebody who... Um, <clears throat> has uh, got into your lead magnet or dropped into your appointment funnel, you need to follow that person up within the first 10 minutes of them jumping in. Or there needs to be an immediate follow-up to let them know, to acknowledge, right, that they are going to be taken care of. Because if you don't do that immediately, anything after 10 minutes, the percentages of conversions start to drop dramatically. 
After an hour, the percentage of conversion drops by more than 40%. So if you get back to somebody within an hour, you've got a 60 percent chance of them being a prospective buyer for services in lead in lead generation. 60%. So you lose 40% of being able to close that deal, right? Because you've taken too long to get to the deal. If you wait a day, it drops down to 80%. You lose 80%, you've got a 20% chance of closing that deal. If you wait two days, you've got a 5% chance of closing out a deal. If you wait two days to get back to somebody, you've got a 5% chance of closing out a deal. And more likely, 30% of the leads that didn't buy from you or you didn't manage bought from somebody else. If you're doing inbound, right, that means that person's interested. If you don't help them with their interest, they're going to go somewhere else. Um, I'll give you a very a classic example of this. I was talking to an agency consultant. They do they do about $2 million worth of revenue. So roughly $170,000 a month in recurring revenue. So it's not too bad, not too shabby. They're managing about uh, 60 clients in their business. And uh, they, they, uh, they basically explained and said they were dealing with a client. And this was in the HVAC market. They were dealing with a client. They gave this client 200 leads. The client did a chargeback, said, your leads are crap, right? Uh, uh, we, we want our money back. We want our money back. Um, and so this kind of kind of rocked or shook the confidence of this agency owner. So when I sat down and talked to him uh, and, I, and I said, this is what, this is what he did, right? <clears throat> so 200 leads, he rang, he called 90 of those leads up. He called 90 of those leads up and he asked some questions. So he had his team hop on the phone saying, we need to call these leads, we need to find out what's going on, why these leads were, were terrible, why they suck, right? So they called the 90 leads. So this is what they did in the 90 leads. They found out of 90 leads that 36 people out of the 90 leads had spent $10,000 or more on an air conditioning company, on an air conditioner, right? So they actually bought an air conditioner from somebody else. They were a lead that was generated for another HVAC company. They bought an air conditioner from sale. Over $300,000 of the sales were, were given, right? This company marketed to, to allow other HVAC companies to pick up $300,000 of sales. So a third of the people I called bought somewhere else. But this is the funny part. 15 people of the people that they were called hadn't bought an air conditioner yet, but were still interested in buying an air conditioner. This is like a week after uh, the, these leads were generated, all these leads were generated. So they were still interested. So then they went back to the company and said, listen, uh, you know, the 200 leads, well, 36 of them bought an air conditioner of somebody else. So $360,000 of the sales, it could have been in your bank account. You didn't, you let go and another HVAC company picked up your lead from your mistake, right? And they bought from them. They didn't buy from you, they bought from them. So you just lot, you paid us, seven grand and you lost $360,000. That's the best return on investment that anybody could get on marketing. Number two, I've got 15 people who say they want to, they're interested in buying an air conditioning unit. My question is to you is, do I send them to you or do I give them to the other guys who are going to sell those leads? What do you want to do? Right? And the guy said, no, we'll take them. Okay, great. Well, that means you're still on for our marketing, right? So we can give you these 15 deals. Of these 15 people, you should be able to close seven deals. That's $70,000. You pay, pay $6,000, $7,000 my service. You're going to get 10x the return on your investment of leads that right now you are not following up, that I'm literally handing over to you saying, we need somebody to call us. So the question I'm asking you, Mr. Renner, is do I give you the leads or do I go and give them to an air conditioning company that's going to help them buy? What do you want to do? Right? So... He didn't send sucky leads. The biggest mistake is that company had a very poor way of managing leads. And so even in our agencies, even us, and I've even made these mistakes as well, where we have poor a poor management structure um, uh, in our business. If we don't manage our leads, then we're not going to make sales, right? So number two, without lead management, your sales are left in the lap of the gods. You've got no control. I cannot tell you the times in my professional career, in my business, when I've got deals happening, that because of time or whatever it happens, I've literally let the deal slip away, right? Through whether it be lack of follow-up, through lack of timing, through lack of uh, making sure that, uh, that I'm keeping them in the loop in the deal. I've done this. I've, I'm openly telling you that I've messed up so many times and I've cost myself hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of sales, right? In the past, I didn't manage the expectation of my leads properly, right? That's loss of money. 
that's loss of you. If you have no control, if you don't control and know what's going on, and you're not actually keeping in the loop of the sales opportunities you have, then you've got no control. That means your business in the lap of the gods, right? That means that you are at the mercy of the market. That's where 95% of agencies are right now. 95% of agencies don't follow up their leads, don't manage their leads effectively, don't even know what their pipeline looks like because you know, they're not thinking like a business owner. They're thinking like a freelancer, right? But you need to take your freelancer hat off and start to think more like, hey, I'm running a business here. I need to make sure I help these people. And so this one thing, if there's one thing you pick up in the training today, this is gonna be a game changer for your business if you do this, right? For every single person that either is here right now watching this, or if you're gonna watch the replay later on, or you see this as a replay, if you apply what I'm sharing with you today, this will be an absolute game changer for your business. You will always be in a situation where you know exactly where you stand, what your opportunities are, and how much revenue you put in your bank account. So that's really cool, really key, right? Really key in the process. Um, so uh, who likes what I'm just sharing? Just type, just type a just type a two if you if you're following along saying, hey, this is awesome. Just type a two, right? <clears throat> um, <laughs> The name of this session is turning lead, managing leads, uh, closing deals. Managing leads, closing deals. Thanks. We're two. We're cool. Okay. We've got the fist bump there from Damien Papworth. Awesome. Right? That's great. So, um, so understand that without lead management, you, your sales are left in the lap of the gods. Really, really critical thing to understand. Right? So, next, what you focus, focus on most becomes, becomes your reality. I will tell you, hand on heart, most of you here are not focusing on the thing you need to be focusing on. Most of you here are not focusing on actually right now, what am I doing today to put a paying customer in my bank account today? Right? If anybody's uh, thinking that right now, uh, is work is sitting there saying, oh, what am I doing today to actively put a paying customer in my bank account today? Just type one if you're doing that. If you're not doing that, right, don't type anything. If you're actively sitting saying, I'm gonna put money in my bank account today, if you're thinking that way, just type one, right? If you're not thinking that way, right, we've got a few people who are actually doing that, right? We've got Zaf, we've got Lou, we've got George, yeah, right? What am I doing? That's the number one thing, what, what I focus on most. What most people do is they're not focused on the actual income generation in their business, right? So even their day-to-day, -day, they don't even manage their business or manage their time effectively to focus on being proactive of generating a client. We need cash in bank. If we don't make an offer, so today I got up at four o'clock in the morning, I already made three offers today, money offers. One of those money offers is gonna be an offer, is gonna be a buy, I know it's gonna be a buy. They're already telling me that it's gonna be a buy. So I'm gonna put, a, a, you know, I'm gonna put a nice chunky five figures into my bank account today, right? Because I know, but if I don't do that every single day, I'm not opening the door because at the end of the day, what am I focusing on? I'm focusing on making sure that I'm adding revenue consistently to my business as you should be as well. So if you're not focused on, hey, I need to put cash in bank today, then guess what? Tomorrow's gonna be the same, the next day is gonna be the same, and the next day is gonna be the same. You're gonna sit there at the end of the week and go, what the hell did I do? Nothing, no money in the bank, right? So if you actively engage the opportunity to generate revenue every single day, you're gonna get revenue. I talked about Anthony, the guy who's making one sale per day, bringing on a $25,000 client every single day of the week, five days a week, $125,000 per week in annualized revenue, right? Do that for a month, right? That's half a million dollars worth of cash in one month, right, in his business, right? How does he do that? He's actively engaging 60 people per day. 60 people, that's what it takes him to get one sale a day. 60 people per day, that's what he's doing, right? But he's the guy that's banking $500,000 a month, right? Other people not doing that because they're not actively focused on the outcome that they're looking for. Somebody's just chit-chatting away, I just wanna get that chat. Uh, he is a Facebook ads guy, he's a Facebook ads guy, yes. So, here's a big problem, right? This is the big problem. Number one, without a plan, you have no uh, uh, you know, no focus, right? No plan, no focus, right? So how many leads are you gonna bring in this month? That should be, it's just, uh, uh, I don't know why my spell check is not working properly uh, there, but let's get into this. So how many, how many leads, leaves? How many leads, right? Let's get back into this, what's going on? <laughs> Do this in real time, how many leads, right? Have you ever seen that? The presenter is actually changing the slides in the middle of the presentation. How many leads are you gonna bring, you're gonna bring in this month, right? 
uh, that's crazy, right? How many offers will you make every day, right? Um, how are you going to manage your leads? How are you going to manage all the leads that you're generating? How many, the 6,000 leads that you've got, the 75 connections you make from LinkedIn every day, how are you going to manage those leads, right? These are things you need to do, right? Uh, and think about uh, what's your stepped out lead management process? So what is the process I'm going to show you a stepped out lead management process? I'm going to give it to you for free. I'm going to show you exactly the stepped out lead management process, right? Uh, so what's the stepped out lead management process, right? Live in your calendar, not in your email. Number one, live in your calendar, not in your email. Look at your emails twice a day. That's it. Once in the morning, once in the afternoon, forget it for the rest of the day. Most people only really need to reply to about four or five emails a day. I get 400 emails or more in my email inbox every single day. Uh, 395 of those emails are managed by somebody else. Five of those emails are probably what I need to respond to urgently in the day. So live in your calendar, not in your email, right? You want to have this open in your computer. And it should look like this. If it doesn't look like this and you've got lots of white spaces, guess what? You've got lots of room for active engagement of clients. So live in your calendar, not in your email. Live in your calendar, not in Facebook, right? Take Facebook off the freaking tabs in your computer. So, so it forces you, in fact, hide the app of Facebook away so that you can't see it on your desktop, right? Uh, on my phone, I delete the Facebook app every time after I've used Facebook, I delete the app. So then I have to upload the app to actually make a post, make a video, do what I need to do. And then once I've done that, I delete the app on my, on my phone. Because I know that if I've got it on my phone, it's just easy to go, hey, how are things going on Facebook? And off to bright and shiny object world I go, right? Live in your calendar, not in your email and not in your Facebook. Live in your calendar, not in your email, not in your Facebook. Now, some people might say, John, but you don't understand. I get my leads through Facebook. Yes, you do, right? Yes, you do. But don't actively engage in posting, uh, commenting, doing all that sort of stuff when you really should be helping people buy the product or the service that you want, right? That's number, that's number one. So next, live in your calendar, not in your email, right? Next, work out, right, of your CRM. Have a CRM. I'm going to walk through. I'm going to show you. I'm going to open up Pipe Drive. I'm going to show you a step-down example of a CRM. I'm going to show you exactly what tabs you need to make your CRM work, right? Uh, somebody's chit-chatting here. Uh, bright and shiny object world. Absolutely, man. Bright and shiny object world is Facebook and email, right? I get lots of emails and lots of webinars to go to and lots of trainings to have a look at. And you know what? If I'm doing that all day, I'm not making sales. All I'm doing is putting more ideas in and I'm becoming what they call a knowledgeable derelict. If I'm a knowledgeable derelict, I know a lot of shit, but it's, I'm not worth shit. I know a lot of shit, but I'm not worth shit because I'm not doing anything about the stuff that I'm learning. I understand that this is what's going on when we consume uh, ideas. Uh, if I consume an idea, I need to take the idea and need to action it straight away. If you're sitting here consuming this video, watching, listening to me right now, learning as you go along, you need to take one thing from this, from what you're learning and apply it straight, straight away, straight after this learning. So if you're watching this video as a replay, what are the things you've picked out of this? Take that out, apply it straight away. I want to, if I'm going to consume or invest my time in learning anything, I want to take the idea and I want to run with it as quickly as possible so that I know that I can get some feedback on the idea. Otherwise, sitting there watching the video for an hour and not doing anything about it is a complete, absolute, utter waste of my time. It's a complete, utter waste of your time because it didn't help you do anything. The implementation, if you don't execute on what you learn, you learnt nothing. You've learnt nothing, right? You've wasted your time. Understand that if you buy a course or a program, if you don't actively engage and actually do it, you've actually learnt nothing. You deserve to waste your money, right? So I know I'm being really strong on this, but as I said, most people are kind of messing around. They're not really focused on generating business and making it happen. Work out of a CRM. This, in my business, we are in our CRM. We are constantly in our CRM. We are not in our email. We are not in Facebook. We are not in other pages. I don't have uh, 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 things that are there to distract me. I want to see this. What is the activity? What's going on? How is this working for me? Because when I do this, this is why we are constantly always adding value revenue to the business because of this thing, right? So I'm going to open up Pipedrive, which a CRM. It's not one that I would. I am recommending. I'm not advocating. I use it uh, as a, as part of a strategy. I'm going to open up. A, I'm going to show you a dummy account to demonstrate what uh, it is like to manage leads and how you can see everything all in one place in a really easy fashion. So I'm going to escape out of this. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Uh, going to uh, get into the share again. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Um, 
We're going to go out here. We're going to share this. I'm going to put this down. Uh, and we're going to go to pipe drive. Look at this. Okay. So in front of me, you should see uh, a pipe drive account. So I, this is an account that we've set up. Uh, you'll notice that there is $3,225,000 worth of sales opportunities right there. Uh, right there. 131 deals are in this, in this uh, opportunity. Uh, but this is a lead management tool. This is a CRM. Now, pipe drive is really cool because you'll notice that you can step out the sales process. If you've got Salesforce, if you're using uh, HubSpot, you can do exactly the same thing. You can do a free uh, CRM called Stream. I'm going to walk you through, uh, give you some options, give you some choices in just a moment. But I'll just explain how this is set up. So all the leads you'll see is lead in, right, over here is lead in, right, all on this so so if I'm emailing let's say I scraped a list all the leads will go into this list right on the left hand side so then what is my reach my reach will be called outreach so it'll be cold email right and follow up with a phone call cold email follow up with a phone call so all the people that are in the cold outreach are the people I've actually actively sent information to uh, and actually going to get my uh, sales development representative to call go in this second area here this is the list I give to my call book or appointment setter to go and set appointments because these are the people we sent interactions to or emails to right so we go to cold outreach right then we go to book appointment right so booked appointment uh, so these are all the appointments to book so right Right now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six appointments booked, right? Now I have no shows. There are people who are not going to show up to your appointment. So I want to make sure that we have the no shows. We, we put them in the no show category, right? Uh, and so we need to follow those people up, get them back on a call. So we want to get this, this no show and we're going to put it back into, the, into that cold outreach, right? There's a no show. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to get some calls. So notice how I can move things around to place people. Uh, so for example, I've got a lead in, uh, we've sent a cold outreach that adds that person to that cold outreach. If we've got a cold outreach, we've booked an appointment, we move them into book appointment part. If they didn't show up, we're gonna move them over here to the no show. Uh, if they did show up, we do a presentation, right? So, so, that, so that we've done a sales presentation. So we go from lead in, cold outreach, booked appointment, no show, they didn't show up for the call. Uh, presentation, we did a presentation, right? Uh, we, we created an offer. So we went from a presentation. So uh, right here, we've got Jack. Uh, we did a presentation, we offered a $25,000 deal to Jack. And so we've got the offer there, right? So now we've got to follow people up, right? So we're going to see what these people we're following up, right? Uh, uh, we did Jared, we're going to go and put him in the follow-up section here, right? And then either buy or they didn't buy. We don't have a maybe. A maybe is a no. You either buy or you don't buy. So to go across from left to right in this uh, strategy, lead in, cold outreach, booked appointment, no show, they didn't show up. We did a presentation with them. We made an offer, right? We made an offer. Uh, we were following up, like so they didn't buy here, but we're following up. And these people bought and these people didn't buy, right? So we're gonna list the no buys. So what we're doing is I can open this up at any time and see exactly where my sales opportunities are. My first attention is gonna be the people who I'm following up here. Uh, it'll flag me for tasks, there's little triangles here. It'll flag me for a call this person tomorrow, follow this person up. I've got information in each of these categories, right? I don't wanna go into, the, into drilling down because it's something you, you should be working out for yourself. But if you have this tool, you can see how this can dramatically improve your chances of closing deals. Because you can see where everything is. You can see all the leads, you can see the outreach, you can see the booked appointments, you can see what's going on. So I know right now that if I wanna make close deals, my, my attention is gonna be here in the follow-up section, right? I've got presentations, so there's two areas that I'm gonna, that I'm, that I'm gonna make sales on, right? I'm gonna either close deals in my presentations on the spot, I'm going to close deals here in my follow-up. These are the two areas that I'm going to close the deals. But the fact that I had to send an offer or send an offer, right, or made the pitch is the offer. I've got to follow them up. They've got the offer. So now I know that I've got to follow these people up, right? So this is the thing I'm going to work. So when I, when I get up in the morning, these are the two in my businesses. These are the two columns that I look for. Who am I doing a presentation to? And who am I following up today, right? Because we need to put some money in the John Logar Foundation bank account right so so that's what we're doing that's where we're focused but if i didn't have this and i had a list of 20 30 people which has happened for some of my sales people and i don't have this to look at then i'm going to drop the ball i'm going to miss out on sales right this focuses you consistently on generating sales and the outcome for your business so the more you understand about 
uh, uh, managing your lead effectively through a CRM, the more sales you're going to make. You're going to close more deals because you're going to see, right? I've got 3.25 million deals in the pipeline. I've got 1.6 million deals uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that I know that, I, that are in the realm of the close. I've got 131 uh, deals on the table, right? Uh, in this process, right? So it gives me a snapshot of what's going on in the marketplace. So this is a very, pipe drive is really cool. It's very inexpensive. But the thing I love about it is the fact that you can step your sales process and you can see how people fit in your sales process. If you look at the lead-in column, there could be a thousand people, 2,000 or 3,000 people in the lead-in, right? So then from there, you want to go, great, you can, I can select any lead that we've had in the last two weeks. Let's go and do a cold outreach for those leads, right? Then I go and give that list to my appointment center and it's going to call people and book appointments for me, right? So now we've got the book appointment. So each person, what we're doing is we're following through the process in what we're doing, right? So we have the steps in what we do. So I'm just going to uh, stop sharing for a second and we're going to go back to my presentation. Uh, where we're going here. Uh, sorry, just going out of that. Uh, we're just going back here and I'm going to share again. So it's going to toggle. I'm going to do that so you can see it. All right. So here's the thing. <clears throat> so we work out the CRM and that's how now this one here is streak. So notice how streak has got, uh, you can go stages, right? Level one, level two, level three, you go stages across and you can manage your leads in Google, in Gmail. Right, so this is all your opportunities, all your tasks. So now you can see, right, uh, in your if you're emailing out of Gmail, you can you can see your entire CRM in Gmail, which is really really cool, right? Uh, this is called Streak, S T R E S T R E A K, Streak. So <clears throat> uh, sales process in your CRM. This is what you need, right? So these are the tabs: lead in, your reach. So how did the lead come to? Was it an ad? Was it a cold email? Was it a LinkedIn connection? What is the what is the outreach, right? So did you book an appointment? So next one, booked appointment, no show, presentation. Did you do a pitch in a presentation? Offer sent, you've sent the you've sent your offer and said, right, you've made an offer. Here's your here's your proposal, here's your pitch, right? Uh, here's the deal. Now we're gonna go into follow-up. Now we're gonna go to yes, they joined or no, they did not join. Um, if you're in a situation in the follow-up, so my thing is, is that you must follow up within 24 to 48 hours. My follow-up column in my business is changing every 24 to 48 hours, right? And the reason for that is, is anything after 48 hours, you're gonna lose the sales opportunity. The, the ability to close a deal starts to diminish, it starts to dissipate because they've forgotten about all the things that you told them in the presentation. 48 hours after you've done a presentation or pitched them, they've forgotten about you. They've forgotten 85% of what you told them. That means they don't, they've lost uh, the information of the value. They don't know why they're paying the amount of money. All that sort of starts, starts to creep in after 48 hours. So what you want to do is you flag people. We say 24 to 48 hours. So, uh, so great. I understand. I'm going to provide you with the information. Uh, let me call you tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon or would 5 o'clock be best? Which would you prefer? Give them this option or that option. Um, so Friday's not good. Well, let's make it Monday. So can we make it Monday, what, nine o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon? Which would you prefer? Nine o'clock, great. I'm gonna solidify that appointment with you right now. And I flagged it here in my, here in my uh, email that I'm gonna be talking to you at four o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. Right, or two o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. Okay, great. Then you can send another email, nurture that person into that sales process, go back, you turn up, then you ask them, hey, would you like to buy, right? 24 to 48 hours, no longer than 48 hours. If somebody says, uh, call me next week, that's next week is way too long. You need to take control. Don't say, when can I call you? You say, hey, great, can I call you tomorrow at this time or this time? Which would you prefer? Just check your calendar for me right now, right? You take control of the follow-up. You don't leave the, the decision for when to follow up in their hands. You take control of this process, right? So... <clears throat> Uh, next thing, lead management software, I'm just going to go through. SellGoSell.com. This is a two-week trial for high level. So if you go to SellGoSell.com, you can get two weeks for free. You can muck around in probably one of the best lead management software around. It's called uh, High Level if you haven't seen it already. This is a great tool to manage inbound leads, not just for you, but if you're doing lead gen, it's a great tool to manage inbound leads for your clients. Uh, and it's almost like you can set up your own, I think for two notes a month, you can have your own SaaS basically branded for you to manage clients. Pipe drive, uh, I think the cheapest is $14 a month, which is pretty cheap. Um, uh, Streak is free. Uh, HubSpot uh, CRM is free. 
uh, active campaign uh, to use the CRM. It's $49 a month, including the email marketing uh, autoresponder software. Uh, uh, and my other favorite, which I love, uh, which is a great software, it's called Close.io. Close so these are, these are six CRMs that are very inexpensive to use. Um, uh, they're very easy because they can actually map out the sales process. You can actually, you, you've got a great visual on how to work with the sales process in that process. So a couple of things. Work in your calendar. Uh, be in your calendar, not in your email, not in your uh, uh, Facebook, number one. You need to live in your CRM. If you don't have a CRM right now, I've just shown you where to get three free ones. And you need to put all your leads into your CRM, all of them. And then because uh, this is the other mistake that most people make uh, is you get a lead. So, so, so tell me, uh, you, uh, uh, I'll ask you to answer this question in just a moment. Have you ever scraped uh, 500 leads, 1,000 leads, 2,000 leads? You scraped the leads and you sent one campaign. You might have done one email or maybe you've done a sequence of three or four emails to this 1,000 leads. And then you go and look because you didn't get the results or didn't get a response. You go and discard this list and you go and look for another list, another scrape list, and you do it over again. How many people have done that? Just type one, in, one on your keyboard. <clears throat> How many people have gone and discarded a lead list that you scraped, right? Uh, you've tried to engage them, you didn't get the responses, and so then you you go, okay, great, I'm gonna go and get another list. How many people did, so we've got a few people. Thank you for your honesty. I have done this, I've done, I've gone and bought a lead, scraped a lead, took one shot at it, and then discarded the list, and then gone and got another list and tried again. Uh, open up a new niche market, do all that sort of crap, right? Don't do that. Those leads, you've taken time. You've Think about it, right? Uh, the business of sales and the business of delivering the service to your clients is one of building a relationship. So if I've got a lead list, I want I, once I've got that list, so I have a philosophy and it's called you buy or you die. That's my philosophy. If you're on my list, you're going to buy something from me somewhere or you're going to die, right? You, that means you die. I know that sounds odd, right? You either buy or you die. I have people saying to me, John, how the hell do I get off your emails? Really easy. You buy my stuff, right? Um, John, how do I stop your people from calling me? Really easy. Buy my stuff, right? So, I, so the, the philosophy is, is that once you're a lead, you're a lead forever. You're a lead for as long as I, I, you're actively engaged with me. You're a lead forever, right? Until you buy something from me, until I've earned the right to help you that you see the value in what I've had to provide, that I've earned that right, that you want to make that investment in whatever offer I'm making out in the marketplace. That's my philosophy on leads. That's why your leads need to be in a working environment so you can see them and you can try, test. Uh, you know, when I do an offer, I don't do an offer to a thousand people. I'll do an offer. I'll go, great, let's pull out two or three hundred people. Let's make the offer and see what happens right? Uh, or let's pull these 50 people, see what happens. And then what I want to do is I want to get on the phone and say, listen, I sent you this offer. I don't even see the offer. Most people say, John, I haven't seen the offer. Great. Right. Or they'll tell my SDRs, Hey, I haven't seen the offer. Okay, great. So uh, this is what we sent out to you. What do you think? Oh, that sounds interesting. Or no, I'm not, not really interested in that. That doesn't, you know, it's not really good. Okay, great. So that doesn't gel with you. What would gel with you? What's a deal that would gel? And then they tell us what they would, what would gel and guess what the next email is? The very thing they told us they were interested in. Guess what happens? The conversion rates go up, right? The conversion rates go up. Great, we've got an offer now that works. Let's double down. Now I can take this offer that I've tested on 50 or 100 or 200 people and now I can go and send it to 1,000 people and do, do the thing. Don't discard your list. Don't discard your leads. There are, there's a reason why you target them. Yes, you want to categorize them as you, as you start working the list. You want to filter through. That's why I like targeting a list as opposed to building a thousand people on a list, right? I like to actually pick and choose who I want to work with. And so LinkedIn allows you to pick and choose, right? On LinkedIn, you can sit there and say, I want a managing director. They're going to have 50 more employees. Uh, uh, so you want decision maker uh, in this particular niche because I can help this niche. So you can be really Really, really specific and you qualify the lead based on certain criteria right that way you've got a better prospect list so I don't need you don't need, by the way to build a million dollar business essentially you only need 300 leads to build, your, to build a million dollar agency you need 300 leads you need to close between 25 and 35 deals out of 300 leads so you just got to close 11% of those people in a year and you will make a uh, million dollars in revenue that's all you need you don't need a thousand people you don't need 10,000 people you just need 300 people that you target, that you nurture uh, and put in a deal. 
Uh, my favorite book on this strategy is a guy called Chet Holmes. He wrote a book called The Ultimate Sales Machine. I would highly recommend every single person buy that book, get it on Kindle, get a hard copy. Uh, I know, I've given away hundreds of copies of that book. Uh, I always have that book lying around somewhere. I've, I know that I've got on my Kindle, but I also keep a hard copy with me. Uh, that book has made me millions of dollars as it has made other people hundreds of millions of dollars in the marketplace. But he talks about this concept of picking and choosing who you want to work with and building a relationship with those people and generating the sales. And one of the things that if you want to do that effectively here is put those people into the CRM and actively engage those customers, right? Because then you can work with the people you want to work with, not the people that, that, uh, that are that don't fit your criteria. So you're managing that process. We did a sales blitz. So something that's coming up in the next few weeks, uh, you're gonna see, you're, all of you are gonna see this. We're talking about an intensive sales blitz. Now we, we, do a, we do a sales blitz. In that sales blitz, we managed 238 leads. From the 238 leads, we made six sales that averaged out to $300,000 worth of sales in one month, in 30 days, just by following this process that I'm just sharing with you of managing a small number of leads into a sales opportunity. So we created a compressed time of an accelerated uh, uh, approach. And at the end of that, uh, we had people, we had some people who closed half a million dollars worth of sales in 30 days, right? So, which is absolutely insane, absolutely insane. Um, so uh, this is a way, uh, uh, one of the fastest ways to do this is being able to manage your leads effectively. So uh, with that, I am going to answer your questions about what I've shared. Uh, I'm just going to stop sharing the screen here. Um, so questions, biggest takeaway that you've had from the session so far, what's the big takeaway for you guys that are on here? What's the takeaway? Just type in the chat the, your takeaways, right? What's the number one thing you've picked up out of what I've just shared? Live in your CRM. Yeah, live in your calendar. Awesome. What else? What else? Keep all the leads. Don't burn the leads. Yeah, you've got them. Uh, did you say high level? High level is a lead management uh, CRM, JB. High level is if you go to sellgosell.com, S-E-L-L-G-O-S-E-L-L.com, you'll get a 14 day trial of that. Mark says nurture your leads. Absolutely nurture your leads. Absolutely. What else? What else have you picked up from this? Can anybody see, type two, can you see that if you have that process of managing your lead, that you would dramatically improve your conversions? Can anybody see how that will work for you? Just type two, yeah. Like if you don't, if, if you don't do this right now, if you apply what I've just shared with you, I'll guarantee you, you'll make more sales because there are no excuses. You can actually measure and track everything in real time in front of you. So you can look at that and go, look at your calendar and go, Holy crap, there's no appointments. Great. Well, we need to go back and make an offer to leads, get them into a book appointment, get them into a presentation, right? So you can actually work on the sections as you go through that process, right? Uh, managing a small number of leads into sales opportunities. Absolutely, Eric. You can, it's like, I'm t like I say, I don't want, I've got, I've got tens of thousands of leads. The problem with tens of thousands of leads, I've got to go and filter, I've got to go and look at my offer, I've got to go do testing, I've got to do all of that. But if I'm, pick, if I'm cherry picking the companies I want to work with, then I'm going to make a, get a better outcome, a better resolve, and better, better sales. I'll give an example of this. Uh, uh, so I did go to see it's the Consumer Electronic Show in Las Vegas. It happens every year in January. I've uh, been doing that for seven years. And I've got to tell you, I have picked up so many clients out of that trade show. It's not funny. But the types of clients you pick up are Bosch, and Sony, Ericsson, uh, you know, software companies, uh, product-based companies. Uh, you'd, be, you'd be amazed at the number of companies. There's 5,000 companies that exhibit at that show every year. Now, I've been going there for seven years and I've been building relationships with a lot of those companies and they've turned into amazing opportunities. In fact, I had one of my champions, Chris Green, come with me last year and uh, he closed $300,000 worth of deals at the, uh, at the CES contract. Uh, at the at the CS uh, uh, trade show. So one of my champions came with me and said, great, let's go and make some money, right? Let's go and open the door to relationships. So he got to he got, he got to pitch on three deals, landed a big fish, uh, $300,000 worth of sales by showing up to CES, right? So, but do we need thousands of leads? No, we, we only spent time in one area. In fact, at CES, because you, there's no way, I, by the way, I've been going for seven years. I've never made it through the entire trade show, never made it. Not once have I made it across. In fact, for three years, there was one section of the trade show I just never got to because it was just too many people to talk to, too many opportunities. But the beautiful thing is, is they're all in one place, right? They're all in one space in the market. John, good to see you here. Julie, good to see you here, right? All in one space in the market. 
yeah, in, in, in the market. So understand that at the end of the day, right, if you did what I just shared with you, I'll guarantee you all of you would move way faster and way closer to your sales opportunities. So what I want to do is I want to answer questions. Um, uh, Damien, do you have any feedback or anything uh, that you want to share? Just type yes if you've got to share. Um, uh, so we can we can uh, we can uh, get you in here, Mr. Papworth, uh, who's been very very generous to us uh, here on these calls. If you've got to share, mate, just type yes, and I'll I'll get you on. Uh, anybody you got a question? Anybody want me to help them with strategy or help with strategy? If you have questions about what I've just shared, uh, please uh, ask. So okay, Damien, let's uh, let's just get you in here. Hey, Damien, how you doing? Good, John. How are you? I'm good, mate. Um, yeah, I just thought, uh, so nothing's really changed in the industry since we last talked yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I just, I thought it was uh, interesting listening to the Australian Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, yesterday. Um, yeah. And, I mean, one of the things that he's talking about at the moment is getting back to business, which is obviously important for all the major leaders of the, of the countries of the world at the moment, getting back to business as usual. And... But he's yeah. talking about doing it in a um, COVID-friendly environment. You know, they're talking about putting a whole framework, an OH&S framework of what a COVID-safe business looks like and having, a, you know, pot legislation around that. So yeah. I just thought that that's a, that's a really interesting um, thing to have been said. And I think we'll get more information about that on Friday. But that's, once again, that's another, re another opportunity for us as digital agencies to get out to our clients, our clients that cancelled or paused um, the, the prospects that haven't engaged with us yet with a, with a message of, well, how are you going to tell your, your clients that you're COVID safe, you know, when we get back to yeah. business as well. And, you yeah. know, I mean, it's our, it's our job to help them get the message out. So, yeah. you know, every single time our leaders come up with uh, some information about the direction they're going, gives us an mm -hmm. opportunity to speak to our clients and, and keep, the ball, yeah. keep the ball moving. Yeah. So um, you're right. Uh, when you see things like this in the market, I had this conversation with an agency yesterday. In fact, I had a long conversation. And, uh, and so it was really interesting. They, they're really busy. So this is an agency that's really busy. But they work with another agency. They obviously share some work with, it, with another provider. And the person they work with is like panicked. Like they said, oh, this month we're 75% down. But this person's really busy. They're really quiet, right? Because they're allowing to be impacted by what's going on. Um, and the thing is, that the, the question was, have you been letting people know that you're actually in business right now, that you can actually help them right now? And the agency that was really quiet hadn't done that, right? Had, you know, this is what they said. I don't normally do that. <laughs> you know, this is for the, the, for, survival, for the survival of your business. I don't normally do that, right? So, so when I hear things like the announcements that our governments are making, that's another way to share to say, hey, if we're getting back into this and we're getting the market right now, right? If there's one thing that I know, uh, Damien, that has happened, and for all of you that are listening, is one thing that a lot of businesses have figured out is they have to spend money on advertising. The one thing a lot of people have realized is that their online presence or their ability to sell online or let people know or communicate online is has a huge impact on their business because they found out that they relied on so much of their business and referrals, their existing customers, that they forgot that, hey, we need to be acquiring customers. So right now as agencies, we need to go out to the market and say, listen, right now as a part of your strategy, you need to be looking at what you're doing online. You need to be looking at your platform, your shop front window online. You need to be visible. You need to be found. You need to be relevant uh, with your offer. And you need to let people know you need to, the only way to get to the top of Google right now is to spend money on advertising, right? Because right now, that phone is the most powerful computer in the world. That phone is the most powerful computer in the world. And so if we don't have a strategy to be on that phone, to be found on this phone, we're out of business. We're not in the market because if they can't find you, they're going to give their business to somebody else. So what you're saying, yes, let people know what's happening. Yes, we're coming back to the market. Yes, right now we need to be investing in money in our marketing to let people know that one, they can buy our stuff and two, that we are open for business. Because if we don't tell them, if we don't tell people we're open business, they'll forget and they'll go elsewhere. That is your, that is your marketing strategy right now. For everybody who's watching, that's your marketing strategy. Are you open? Are you out there? Are you letting people know what they can buy? How are you doing that effectively right now? Right, and if we can, and at the end of the day, in terms of advertising, advertising is the best ROI that you're ever going to make. Right, for every buck that you spend, if you can pick up two or three or five bucks for every buck, 
you can't get that in, in uh, property uh, deals. You can't get that rate, rate of return on the stock market. But in advertising in business, you can get a thousand percent return, right? You know, put a put, thousand uh, dollars down and make 50 grand, right? I've seen people do it over and over again best return on investment, right? So understand that you need to, if you're gonna be in the market, you need to actively be in the market. You need to be advertising. If you're not advertising, you're not in business. If you are not advertising out there, you are not in business right now. That is the message you wanna be putting out to the clients in the marketplace. So Damien, thank you for sharing that, mate. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's interesting too though, like when you talk about these announcements that come up, like I think about advertising, absolutely. You can, you can do a, a Facebook ad with video and that kind of stuff, put that out talking about how the, your clients are dealing with this, but it also leads to email marketing. You know, John, you've yeah. mentioned a couple, a couple of your champions making big, big dollars on email marketing, not to mention yeah. web website maintenance. You know, they need to update their yeah. websites. Every time there's an announcement, they should be updating the website with either a blog post or something on their home page that explains to their clients what they're doing. You know, it's just, it's an amazing opportunity for our work to support our clients every single time one of our national leaders, you know, has a, an announcement of what's coming up next. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's the thing. You want to be the leader. You want to be the leader of your market and your client base. You need to let people know what they're going on. And I can tell you, so Edmund, Edmund Pelligan, one of the guys that I work with in champions, right? He said, he said, John, I need to, I need $10,000 cash. Right. So it's like, let's go, like, let's go to your list. Let's go make an offer, right? Let's go and talk to people we've made offers to in the past. Let's go and make an offer to people we've made an offer we've never, we've never worked with. And that's what we did. And by the end of the week, 10 grand cash, right, in, in his bank account. Because he, he focused on, great, what have we got to let people know? We've got to let people know they've got to take some action, got to do something. What's your plan? If your plan is no plan, then you're screwed. So why don't we talk about a plan, right? Offer a plan, right? Because people are looking for your leadership. So if you're feeding back, if you're adding value, you're providing information, you're more likely to open the channel of something saying, hey, we need some help, right? I was talking to an agent yesterday, who closed, I think they closed a $25,000 deal on a website deal yesterday. Uh, um, and for in a tourist destination for a company that's based in tourism, which has been absolutely decimated. But this company knows that people are gonna come back in the market and they know they need to fix their website. Now they wouldn't have asked for a website if the, if the agency didn't offer it to them, say, hey, time to fix the website, time to clean this up, time to look good. Do you need a redo or do you need a reface or do you need to re-message uh, for coronavirus time? That was an offer in the market. Lo and behold, 25 grand deal fell in their pocket, right? So that's how simple it can be and how easy it can be. So Damien, thank you for being here, mate. I really appreciate you hopping on these Pleasure. calls. All right. Um, so questions, I'm happy to take, answer a question here uh, for you if you've got a question. Uh, um, uh, if you want me to elaborate on anything that I've shared here today that might help you, um, because at the end of the day, live in your calendar, not in your email or Facebook, uh, have a CRM and I'll guarantee you're gonna make more sales. Uh, Howard T.R. posted a question. So let me look, Howard, uh, at the question that you posted. All right, so getting a few LinkedIn uh, conversations, offering appointments uh, who are insisting on uh, an email with more info before hopping on a call, yep. Uh, try to give an overview, no pricing, uh, press for a call, any better way of managing situation. Um, the, the best way to manage the situation is uh, actually hop on a, a phone call, not not an appointment booked, but just hop on a call, just have a chat about this thing to, to make it clear. And somebody's always going to ask me for information. So what I would do is I would sit there and say, I would sit there and say, look, Number one thing right now, this is what's happening right now. This is what I know that we can help people with. It, uh, my question to you is, is some, if we can show you this outcome for your business, would that be useful to you? Why don't we have a quick chat? So what you got to do is you got to pick one thing that's going to be a hot button or something compelling or a problem solver. And say, look, at the end of the day, we know that this is a problem in the marketplace or this is an issue. Here's how you fix the issue. But what we're doing is we're showing people how to leverage or create an opportunity out of this. So you've really got to think about the content you're providing and the contents uh, in, this, in this process. You might have to touch base, Howard, three or four times for them to agree to make an appointment with you on LinkedIn. But my fastest way to get an appointment is just get on the phone and ask them. Just, just reach out to them. Like you got them in the conversation. You say, hey, look, I just want to touch base. Don't want to waste your time. If you can give me 60 seconds, you can let me know whether or not we should continue the conversation. Otherwise, I'll make sure that you get access to the best information we have on helping in the marketplace. Would you like to do that? Yes, awesome, boom. There's your script, right? So, so unless you've got something really super compelling, uh, one of the best ways to do this is have something in your sleeve that's really cool. It doesn't have to be yours, it could be somebody else's, and say, hey, do you want access to this? 
If you do, let's go call. That's another way to do it as well. Uh, if you like access, let's do this. So how would I hope that answers your question? Anybody else got a question? Just type in the question if you'd like me to elaborate. If you want to ask any questions about what we've been talking about with regard to the CRM, uh, uh, or the choices of CRM, please ask the question. I'll help you here. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to say thanks for being here. Let's get out and make some money. Scott, have you ever ran a Facebook? Uh, uh, Scott, uh, la, 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 la. Uh, 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 yes, I have. Uh, so my answer to your question, Scott, is yes. <laughs> um, so I don't know what else to in the context. Uh, strategy question on targeting franchise groups for their franchise e recruitment. Yes, Anthony. Uh, especially right now, where many groups may be holding off on adding new franchisees. Uh, to their networks. Well, Anthony, I can tell you there's a whole bunch of franchises right now that are adding franchisees to the network. In fact, I'm talking to one right in the middle of about to do a massive marketing campaign to acquire uh, 15 franchisees uh, in the next 45 days. So there's a lot of franchise companies out there that are bringing franchise, especially depending on what type of business they're offering. If it's a finance, uh, the finance franchises, so think of, of recession-proof businesses, those franchise companies are the ones that I would approach. So, so targeting franchise groups and franchise recruitment, target the ones that are in uh, the in recession-proof industries. By the way, guys, the franchise market is a massive opportunity for sales uh, for what we do. Um, uh, the other thing also is is, is there's thousands of freaking franchises for multiple business categories. So think about the business categories that are recession-proof. They're the ones I would target if I was if I were you, right? They're the ones I would target. Um, no, real estate's not a target market. Financial planning, bookkeeping, accounting, those sorts of franchises, um, uh, professional services, there are legal franchises, uh, uh, financial control franchises, there's so many. Like I'm, uh, Anthony, there are hundreds and hundreds to pick from. Uh, if you go and watch uh, the hottest markets video on YouTube that I did about three weeks ago, uh, go and watch that. There are 30 categories with over 300 subcategories. Uh, look for the franchise groups in that in that video. It's on it's on YouTube or it's in the Facebook group. Uh, so I did it about three weeks ago on the hottest hottest markets. So there's so in that in that list of 30 major categories, there if you spread that out, there's probably about 300 franchise uh, more uh, subcategory franchise groups you can go after. So plenty of people you can go after. Look for the areas of the markets that are actually uh, uh, are growing right now that are, that are actually generating business. If I if I were you, that's what I would do. Um, uh, so, uh, so, so to answer your question, Scott, have I ever run Facebook ads for cosmetic surgeons? My answer is yes. I don't, if that, if that helps you, or maybe you're asking a different question, you can ask a different question. So my answer to you, uh, uh, Scott is yes. Yes. I have run Facebook ads for cosmetic surgeons and do they work? Absolutely. And do they buy Facebook ads? Absolutely. Uh, very, very uh, interesting market. Right now, uh, it, uh, it's a market that uh, has uh, other opportunities in the co coronavirus market. Uh, uh, yes, but the thing is, again, we, uh, you can, you, there are plenty of ads that are run for the cosmetic market. If you zero in eight to specific procedures, like niche into procedures, uh, that's the way to do it. And what you want to do is you can actually do an awesome pay per lead structure in that market. There's a phenomenal um, uh, 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 lead structure in the market. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, go to the subcategories. If you go to the Society of Plastic Surgeons.org in the US, uh, there are about 60 subcategories that plastic surgeons deliver services on. If you look at any one of the search volumes in those specific categories, probably one of the biggest categories is rhinoplasty, nose jobs. Uh, um, so uh, you can run niche on niche campaigns for nose job surgeons. And I know there are 190 uh, registered uh, practices that specialize in no jobs, nose jobs just in uh, New York, just in New York City, not New York State, New York City. So there's 190 leads on that website right there for you just for rhinoplasty. Uh, that doesn't include the 7,000 leads uh, for rhinoplasty in the greater metropolitan of all the United States, uh, the metropolitan areas of the United States. So, so if you want to work with plastic surgeons, uh, then uh, I would go niche within the niche. I would not go, let me bring you patients. I would go, let me bring you, um, you know, a, a cleft palate surgery. Let me bring you uh, nose jobs. Let me bring you tummy tucks. Let me bring you, like, go deep into the niche. That's where the opportunity, opportunity is. 
So, uh, Lou, what's the best platform for physios? Uh, our platform at Breakthrough for us. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, I don't understand what you mean is the best platform. Uh, uh, can you elaborate on the question, Lou? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Facebook right now. Uh, Facebook uh, and AdWords. Right now, AdWords and also Google My Business. Uh, AdWords and Google My Business for, for, for physios, absolutely. Uh, uh, really, really important for SEO in, the, in that component. Uh, and if you want to talk about SEO, Lou, you definitely need to talk to Global Marketing for that. So, yeah. So, uh, platform for, uh, for patients, absolutely Facebook. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, but AdWords can work really well because you can get direct appointments for AdWords. AdWords is super, super powerful for, physio for physios. So hopefully that answers your question, Lou. Any other questions? Anthony, you got any questions? We've got a whole bunch of people on here, which is great. We've got some new names here too, uh, which is awesome. Uh, John, uh, Marenko, if you've got any questions, let me know. Julie, nice to have you here. Uh, Oscar, awesome to have you here. Zaf, nice to see you here. JB, uh, uh, Eric, awesome. Anybody got any questions? I'll take another question. I was going to say thank you for being here. Uh, um, Anthony, how would I best approach franchise groups offering omni retargeting? I wouldn't offer omni retargeting to franchise groups, Anthony, unless they were running ads. So the only people that I would speak to, Anthony, about omni retargeting are, are businesses right now that actually are running direct advertising. Uh, so, so. So the question is, are you running ads? Do you want to reduce the cost of your ads? Uh, do you want to have Coca-Cola's budget and have Coca-Cola's reach on every major network platform uh, for pennies on the dollar? Are you interested in seeing how we can brand and put you out to everybody in the market so you're visible on the New York Times, CNN, news.com, whatever? Are you interested? That's an easy offer to make, Anthony. But if you're going to offer uh, only retargeting, only offer only retargeting to people who are currently spending money on ads, they have to be generating at least 100 or more leads per month uh, out of their business, which means they've got about, uh, they're getting probably about 1,000, uh, anywhere between 500 and 1,000 click-through impressions, right? Uh, they're the people you want to target. So don't target people not advertising because omni-retargeting is much harder to work uh, for that. Uh, omni-retargeting makes your current advertising work better. Uh, that's, that's why it's a good pitch. So if I was going to approach franchise groups, I'd be approaching those guys who are spending money on ads. Uh, my approach would is, can we give you a get better cost per lead ratio? Can we dramatically put your uh, conversions on steroids? Uh, let me show you how you can have Coca-Cola's budget for pennies on the dollar to the marketplace. So that's, that's what I would do. Uh, I was told that getting franchises is a long play. Is that true? No, you can get individual owners and franchises straight away. And I'll give you an example. I work with a guy who works with State Farm Insurance uh, insurers. Uh, he has a very specific AdWords campaign that he runs for those guys. He gener if, they, if they employ his AdWords campaign, they had between ten dollars and $20,000 a month in commissions on his AdWords campaign. He worked with 50 State Farm Insurance guys. Now State Farm Insurance is paying them uh, about $3 million to run campaigns for the entire group so that's what happens when you follow some of my champions training so yeah absolutely good for him <laughs> right uh, but he but they applied that strategy of going direct and then they would go to the, the governing body and the governing body went holy crap this is amazing what what how do we hire you to do this for the whole market i was talking to one of my champions the other day who's just about who's been invited to a group company that has 50 locations uh in their franchise group uh that, that he has managed to work with 17 locations get amazing results now the companies come in and say hey um this is the, for them this is going to be like a about a two million dollar deal for the for the Facebook guy, uh, where they get to work with all fifty of the um, uh, of the people in the marketplace. So that's another way to approach go direct, build the results, uh, get them to happen. We do this. In, uh, we've done this a breakthrough. We've worked in the franchise groups. We're slowly, slowly where the franchise company now is coming to us and saying, "Hey, how can we work together and run across the board of the whole company?" So it's a great way if you get in uh, to go in with the independent and then work your way through to the corporate. Uh, because then you can go to the corporate and say, hey, look at the results we're getting, right? But here's the thing. You own the ads. You own the funnel. You don't give the funnel to them. You rent the funnel. You rent the funnel, Anthony. You don't give the funnel, right? That's the way you do this. So anything else? I'm happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, I'm going to say thank you for being here. And uh, I want you to go and uh, get your CRM. What's the thing? That's what I want to do. If you can just type in what's the one thing you're going to apply today from what you've learned today. Just type in what you're going to apply. Remember... Doing training and not doing uh, the action part is worthless. You've wasted your time if you don't take action. So 
So what is the one thing that you're going to take action on right now to make sure? Uh, calendar is a set, calendar and CRM. Yep. What else? What are you going to do? Get the CRM going, Zaf. So I want to see tomorrow, Zaf, if you hop on tomorrow's call, I want you to tell me that you've set up your CRM. Uh, set up a CRM properly, yes. Uh, put my leads into a CRM, yes. Awesome. This is the action. So you need to take this action today. So tomorrow, it's running, right? Uh, the subject one. I don't know. <laughs> that's funny, James. Thank you. Uh, put my leads into a CRM. Uh, I need to do a webinar on licensing. Um, uh, yes, uh, but that owns, opens up a can of worms. Nobody on here knows will will be in a market to be able to do that effectively. But thank you. Uh, that's something that I would probably do with my champions, not not publicly. Uh, we do have a few of our champions that are in licensing mode. Uh, Mark got the got a CRM. Awesome. Use a CRM. Using quietly. Awesome. Yep. So remember, live in your calendar. Operate every day through your CRM. This will dramatically improve the chances. Don't waste your leads. Put all your leads in the CRM and manage those leads into opportunities. Uh, lay the leads. If you watch this video again, you can go back and see how I've laid that pipe drive uh, CRM. You can literally copy and paste and do exactly the same thing for your CRM. Uh, with that, I want to thank you all for being here. I really appreciate you being on this call. I look forward to seeing you same time, same bat channel tomorrow, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, LA time, 8 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. We are back here for more tactical strategies, practical things to apply. I uh, hope you're getting a lot out of these. If you want to catch up on previous episodes, go to consultingunleashed.com forward slash go. Uh, in there is the Facebook group, the Unleashed group. Make sure you join the group uh, because we put post the videos in the group. Uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, then make sure you turn on the bell so that you get notified when we upload these videos because I know that I've been sharing some scripting and strategy. Uh, you can see all the videos there. We have uh, the last uh, 30, uh, nearly 40 days. We've put 40 days of videos into the YouTube channel. Um, so uh, make sure that you hop in there. Uh, other than that, if you know of anybody who needs to be here or should be here, can you please invite them to consultingunleashed.com forward slash go. Uh, love to see them here uh, because at the end of the day, I want to help as many people in this time of craziness. Uh, let me tell you, there is significant opportunity out there. I'm seeing my champions do amazing things and generate clients. We've even had people here on these dailies that are applying these tactics and getting amazing results for their business as well. So if you know of anybody who should be here, uh, who should access this, please do uh, send them to consultingunleashed.com forward slash go. Uh, with that, I want to thank you for being here. Damien Papworth, as always, thank you for the share. I really appreciate the fact that you're supporting this uh, and you're giving us some updated stuff uh, on a daily basis. I look forward to seeing you all uh, same time, same bat channel tomorrow. Take care, everybody.